This is it. It's time to decide the best whiskey of 2023. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Bourbon Hutch, and thanks so much for joining me on this journey through the world of whiskey. So, it's all led to this. The final four whiskeys are still standing. So throughout 2023, I've been collecting bourbon, adding things to The Bourbon Hutch, reviewing them for you guys, and we narrowed it down to our top 10 whiskeys of 2023. Did a video on that, so if you haven't seen that, definitely watch it. And there's two other videos in this series where we took those 10, split them into groups of five and did blind matchups. And we took the two winners, the two best from each of those little brackets and we put them here. And now these are the four whiskeys left. One of these today will claim the crown of best whiskey of 2023. So without further ado, let me introduce you to this stellar heavyweight lineup. So all the way over here, we've got Jack Daniels, single barrel, barrel proof rye. My particular bottle is 128.5 proof, which is kind of low for this kind of release, but it's still a hitter. This has been a somewhat regular release, becoming less allocated for around 70 to $75. It's been a great new release from Jack Daniels. Let's see how it does. Now over here, we've got Elijah Craig barrel proof batch C9 23. 133 proof, 13 years and seven months old, an absolutely legendary bottle that has been making waves in the whiskey world. Excited to see how it does. And then over here, we've got another legendary bottle, Maker's Mark Cellar Aged, a bottle that came out this year while people were clamoring for older Maker's Mark releases. They delivered with a 12 year old bourbon and it's phenomenal. And then last but not least, we've got Michter's 10 year old 2023 rye release. This is a later addition in my collection journey this year. I reviewed it recently and by golly, it is phenomenal. Maybe the best rye I've ever had. Although we'll see, maybe the Jack Daniels takes it down today. This is super exciting. All four of these are phenomenal. Literally every single one of them is a huge addition to my collection and I love each of them, but there can only be one winner. So, with that being said, let's clear off these bottles and let's dive into the matchup. We'll mix it all up, we'll get it set up, the whole blind, and then we'll see what comes out on top. Okay, everybody, our blind is fully set up now. I have no idea what the order is here. It's not a double blind. I do know what the options are, obviously, but nonetheless, let's get ready to dive in. Just before we do that, I do wanna say, it's been an amazing journey through the last couple of years starting this channel had no idea what it would become when I started it. And I'm just so genuinely happy that there's a community that loves to watch these videos and comments back and forth with me. It's great. If you're not a subscriber already, would love to have you aboard for all of 2024 as we journey through the year. And don't worry, we'll be collecting whiskey and doing this all over again by the end of the year. While you're at it, comment down below, which of these do you think is gonna take home the big prize? Let's dive in and find out. So all the way over here, we'll call this glass A and we'll dive in on the nose first. Ooh, nice. Sorry, I'm left-handed, so usually switch it over here. Ooh, this has got some pop and spice. A little bit of a astringent punch, but zesty, in-your-face kind of nose. Yeah, there's something fruity going on here. Vanilla undertones. Maybe I'm detecting some rye spice on this. Some baked goods. A layer of like oak. But yeah, this one has like a kind of poppy in your face nose. Good start. Let's go to glass B on the nose. Well, that is a drastic difference. Oh man, this is so much more caramel and chocolate and a deep dark red cherry, almost plum in terms of the fruit. Everything about this is dark and rich. Whereas glass A in a lot of ways was brighter and poppier. This one has like a cool 
dark vibe to it. Nothing like hot or bright. Almost all this like cool, rich, dark chocolate, cherry, plum, vanilla, brown sugar. Excellent. All right, moving on to glass C on the nose. Ooh, kind of back toward a glass A in terms of direction here. Lighter and brighter. This is much more candy sweet though. Very like banana, cherry, lollipop kind of vibe. Brown sugar. A little touch of chocolate on this, dark chocolate as well. Some spice. Kind of like a baking spice bouquet here but mixed in with this really banana vanilla pudding kind of sweetness. And then, all right, glass D on the nose here. Oh, this is more similar to glass B now. Dark, rich, some plum, more oak, sticky kind of oak on this one. A dark caramel. Vanilla punch to it as well. And this one smells like it has proof on it for sure. Yeah, that one's got like layers of a little bit of molasses, maple syrup, a sticky oak. But then this like plum richness as well. And the oak I think is the strongest on glass D. Okay. All of these are great to be expected. Hard to kind of pick a favorite. If I did have to pick a definitive favorite though, right now, I think I would go with glass B. Just loving that nose, but all of them are really, really good. Second to that might be glass D, but we're gonna give these some more time to open up as we go through. We'll come back and revisit the nose as we do, you know, the reverse order and things like that, but we'll stick with the palette now and we'll go in and we'll We'll see how we get a lot more information from the tasting experience. All right, glass A on the palate. Cheers. Hmm. Rye spice, lemon and honey and orange citrus, really citrusy. Lots of warm vanilla and sugar cookie sweetness to it that kind of settles in on the back end of the palate. Mm. It's very effervescent, refreshing as well. That's phenomenal. Didn't taste like it had a huge amount of proof, but it has a huge amount of flavor. That's really, really good. I am tending to think that that's a rye. It's going to be interesting to pick out, you know, there's two ryes and two bourbons, so they'll probably have stark kind of alternating differences. We'll see, but that one, it's full of flavor and very citrusy. I did just have a sip of water. I'll get a sip of water between each of these glasses, just so you know, but I usually cut that out. All right, let's go to glass B on the palate. Cheers. Hmm. Wow. That one is dark and rich. It almost tends toward a little bitter, almost like a bitter dark chocolate. Some of that caramel comes in to kind of sweeten it up. It's got this like really plum, black cherry, dark, dark, rich fruit to it. Almost like you get the, the juicy part of the fruit, but also the skin of like a plum or a cherry where it's very, almost a little bitter and acidic too. Um, but mixed in is this caramel vanilla bouquet as well. That one has punch to it, definitely more detecting more proof, so more punch to it, a little bit more staying power in terms of spice. Glass A had a ton of flavor that stuck around, but glass B has a little bit more of a feeling in the mouth that just kind of sticks around. All right, let's go to glass C on the palate. Cheers. Wow, that's warm in a good way. Very well rounded. It came forward with a lot of brown sugar and oak, kind of darker tones. But then it really fades this cotton candy 
sweetness, very confectioner sugar, banana runts, cherry lollipop, bubble gum, a little bit of a rye spice sticking around with all of that, a little bit of chocolate, oh, very interesting, very complex, so stark how the front of the palette was dark, rich, oaky brown sugars, and then it really fades to this candied cotton candy sweetness. It's uh, also got good staying power. Really, really good whiskey there. All right, let's go into glass D. Last but not least. Ooh, wow. And I thought glass C was robust and warm in the mouth. That is powerful. Ton of oak, ton of oak. Uh, going back to glass B with some of that plum. This might be more like a raisin. Nice dried fruit kind of quality to it. Layered in with a lot of cinnamon, brown sugar goodness. It is lingering forever. Rich. The oak on this is, is the star of the show though. That's the best part. It's so nice and sweet and sticky oak. And then you layer in some of that like plum, raisin, and brown sugar. And vanilla too. There's always vanilla. I always get vanilla and caramel, of course, you know. So that one's really, really good too. Okay. Uh, this is going to be tough. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back in reverse order. I'm going to do some AB comparisons. Just kind of let the flavors continue to develop and then decide what my order is. I will fast forward through all of that so this isn't like an hour long video for you guys. And then we will reveal the order and the winner. All right, everybody. This has been so much fun. I could just go back and forth on these all day long. They're each so good. But we have picked our best whiskey of 2023. I've got my order in mind, and I'm excited to see what each of these is. Just as a little reminder of how things are developing here, Glass D, going back, is like so dense. That's the word that comes to mind, really dense, rich whiskey. Glass C is super candy forward and bright and complex. Class B is the most dark, kind of invites you to peel back layer by layer and the nose really awesome. And Class A is very poppy, very citrusy and very bright and in your face. So let's dive into my order and my reasons here. So in fourth place today, but by no means a loser because it made it this far is Glass C. While I enjoy that banana runt cotton candy sweetness, it just doesn't have the, the richness or the depth of some of these others. And for me, it just, it wasn't even like a half notch short. All these are so close. This was just the one that I tended toward the least today. So that is the Jack Daniels Barrel Strength Rye. So that makes a lot of sense. I get a lot of banana on it, just like I usually do with Jack Daniels. It's still so good. And for something that's gonna be regularly available for around 70 to $75, it hung with all of these other whiskeys, which are sometimes almost impossible to find. So that is good news for all Jack Daniels fans. Okay, moving on to third place. For me today, this was a really, really close race, especially among these top three here. But ultimately, I went with glass A in third place. Very citrusy. I could sip on it all day. The only thing that held it back was that it wasn't as dense and the mouthfeel wasn't quite as good as the other two, which is the only reason it's in third place. So let's see what that was. Okay, that is the Michter's 10-year-old rye. Now that makes a lot of sense given that this is only, I think, 92 proof. Not quite as robust as, I guess, the Makers and the C923 from Elijah Craig are because those are the remaining two. So what a phenomenal rye though. Although it is interesting. Both the ryes came in fourth and third. The name of the channel is The Bourbon Hutch and that is typically what I gravitate toward the most. Okay. Here it is, the big moments, the decision, what comes in first place 
and what comes in second place among the remaining two. And these were the hardest two to kind of tell apart. They're rich, they're dark, they're creamy. For me, here's how I'd break it down. Glass B has maybe one of the best noses I've ever smelled in my life. Unbelievable bouquet of fruits, light and dark, rich and kind of very like almost flowery too. What a bouquet. And then glass D here has one of the best palate experiences I've ever tasted. It's just so rich and dense and powerful. And so it was really, really hard to choose among the two. Let's just say that. And I know I'm building this up a lot because honestly, I feel like I shouldn't even pick a winner among these two. <laughs> They're both so, so good, but I had to. And so we'll reveal the winner because that'll reveal second place. And for me today, the winner was Glass D. I have to go with the palette. I have to go with the rich palette, the amazing finish. Even if the nose I don't think is as good as Glass B, the way it delivers on the palette is exceptional. Let's see what it was. Okay. Elijah Craig C923, which makes Maker's Mark Cellar Aged our second place. You've got Elijah, you've got Makers, you've got Michters, and you've got Jack. All of these are incredible. But Maker's Mark Cellar Age, simply put, maybe has the best nose I've ever smelled. That makes a lot of sense for a 12 year old weeded. I feel like that just has to have a great nose and Makers already has a great nose at six years old. But Elijah Craig, man, the best batch I've ever tasted by a mile. I mean, this is ridiculously good stuff. I am so, so sad that I didn't pick up a second bottle when I had a chance. I'm gonna savor every last drop of this as it lasts. Already made quite a dent in it, but this is, I think, what Elijah Craig Barrel Proof was like born to be. A lot of people have memories of these phenomenal batches that are some of the best whiskey they've ever tasted for around $70. And that is the case here. This is maybe the best whiskey I've ever had. All right, everybody, that's gonna wrap it up. What a journey it's been. Thanks so much if you followed along from our top 10 all the way down to our definitive number one here today. It's been so much fun to get to taste these over and over and kind of discern the differences here. Let me know in the comments below, did this turn out the way you thought it would? And also, what has been your favorite whiskey of 2023? I just wanna hear what you guys are loving and sipping on. Until I see you guys again for another video, all I can say is keep drinking good whiskey and Cheers.